Hey guys, so today we're going to begin our frame-by-frame -frame animation uh, projects with a simple bouncing ball. It's going to start sort of at the top, at the peak of its uh, sort of descent, and it's going to bounce, you know, maybe twice and then roll off the screen. That's the idea with this bouncing ball um, uh, animation here. So you should see two files to download. You should see a uh, image that has these um, animated keyframes, which I found from this website, uh, angryanimator.com, which basically just shows you the keyframes. And as we know, keyframes are essentially just a way of telling us where the object is going to be, and um, the program is going to essentially do the tweening. It's going to give us the sort of information we need to uh, to go, go in between it. So it's not just these frames, it'll smooth it out as we go down. Um, now if we wanted to say, for instance, animate this at exactly 24 frames per second, then we could, um, you know, just have each one of these be its individual frame and just have this be a, a second and a half. But I think I want to make it uh, a, a, a little bit, um, a little bit, let's say I slow it down a little bit. So we're going to um, uh, probably put it like maybe like 12 frames per second, which is going to make it look a little bit, um, a little bit different. And so we, we can, we can do some experiments and see how it looks at different frame rates and stuff. Um, all right. So what we'll do is we're going to uh, just pull these two into Premiere. Now I'm using the uh, effects. Um, the editing, rather, um, using the editing uh, uh, workspace. So if you want to make sure it looks the way I look, you can just reset to save layout with um, editing chosen. And the, before I do anything, I'm not going to put the animation keyframes in there first. I'm going to put in a color um, uh, a, a color mat. So I'm going to ask this little button here, the, the little new button, and I'm just going to say new color mat. And it's going to say 1920 by 1080, and you've got several different options to um, uh, to choose from, I'm going to choose uh, the 24 frames per second, and I'll press OK. I'll just make it black for now since the ball that we're working with is white, and we can just call this bouncing ball just so it'll streamline the naming process. Um, so I'll just pull this in. And it automatically has it being five seconds long, right? And so when you want, when you have it five seconds long, you can see that in between each second, we've got 24 little frames that we can work with. Um, so just you can zoom it in to where you can see about one second uh, from start to finish, maybe two seconds from start to finish. And you can kind of see, you see a little more space because we're going to be working within this, this space here. Um, all right, so I'll next put in the uh, animation keyframes. And I'll make sure this is sized up. So I'll select this. And you know, as as usual, you have two ways of resizing. Is you could just double click on it, and then grab any one of the anchor points and just drag it to where it's you know full screen. And it could be as big as you like. I'm going to make it just almost as uh, big as it, it can be before it starts to interfere with the edges. And I'm just going to drag it to where the ball begins, right as the screen begins, just so I can kind of have that. And you notice a couple of things about these keyframes. The ball changes shape, and it doesn't just change shape um, in, uh, you know, sort of like it doesn't get bigger or smaller. It actually warps. Um, but you notice that whenever we try to, like, pull the, the height, the whole thing moves, and, and we're going to have to affect that with the ball, and I'll explain how we'll do that in a second here. Um, the next thing I'll put in is the ball. So I'll put that in here. And you can see, you know, first off, that the ball is going to be a little hard to see on the white. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my animation keyframes GIF. I'm going to go to my effect controls, and I'm just going to pull the opacity down to, say, for instance, like 80%. 80% there. And that's going to just help it uh, stick out just a bit more from the, uh, from the back there. Um, all right. So with the ball selected, I'm going to go over here to my effect controls. So my effect controls are up here at the um, you know top, top, top left. And I'm going to click on a keyframe for, I'm going to activate the, the keyframes for each one of these little um, things here. I'm going to say position, and I'm going to say scale. And then over here, I'm going to get rid of my uniform scale, and I'm also going to have scale height and scale width. And uh, as far as rotation goes, I'll have that uh, done as well. And then with the anchor point, um, I can just leave that blank. And uh, opacity, I'll just leave that blank as well. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'll just get my motion selected here so I can move it where I want it to be at the beginning. And um, what we'll do is we'll sort of shrink this down slightly to where it's about the same size as the ball in the keyframe there in the model. Undo what I just did. 
So in this case, because it's not uniform in scale, I'm going to have to hold down shift to make sure it's constrained to be a ball, uh, be a good circle. Um, all right, so um, as I was saying before, we could animate this to where each one of these keyframes is, um, you know, 24, like is, is, is one, one frame, but I don't want it to be one frame. I want it to be at least two frames. So depending on how smooth you want your animation to be, you could either make you know, from here to here be one frame, or you could have it be, you know, five frames. But uh, whatever you do is going to involve you advancing the, the timeline for a little bit. Now this first step, as you can probably predict, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate through the timeline. So we're just going to press this little button here, the step forward one frame, and we're going to advance through that, uh, you know, uh, and then we're going to reposition the ball uh, where it needs to be, and then we're going to go back and we're going to change the uh, uh, change change the height and the width and stuff like that. Um, so, but but the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to see if we can't um, uh, go through and make sure it's in the right position. And uh, I'll just go ahead and start doing that. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the step forward one frame, and I'm going to press it again, and then maybe one more time. So I'll just do three. So every third frame, I'm going to put this on a new keyframe. So I'll just drag this in. And then I'll do the same thing. One, two, three. This goes blurry because it's trying to read what's, what's happening here. And I'm just going to drag it forward onto the other keyframe. And you want this to be centered with um, the drawing behind it. One, two, three. And I'll just drag it down and center it with the next ball there. One, two, three. Drag it down. One, two, three. Drag it down. One, two, three. Drag it down until it's centered on that little line there. One, two, three. Drag it up. And I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up here. So if you want to just to uh, uh, continue doing this, uh, and you can, you know, obviously put on some music because this is going to take a second and um, uh, you can uh, you can just see if you can once again navigate forward three frames before moving it to the next position on this this diagram here Okay, so for this last one, so um, you'll notice, let me just move this out of the way here. You'll notice that there are two shapes here. There's this squashed ball shape as it's sort of like pressing itself down. And then there's this uh, fully round shape where it's it's reached the, the, the bottom of its, of its jump. So the round shape is the very last one. And then the penultimate shape, the penultimate keyframe is this squashed one. So you want to make sure that you keep that in the same same place and use add a new keyframe there. So once you've put it down to the very last, uh, the, the next to last one, so you notice over here I've got one more keyframe to put in. I'm just going to hit this little button right here, this little add remove keyframe, it looks like a little diamond, and it's going to add another keyframe there. So let me just run back to the beginning and I'm going to take a look at what this looks like here. This took about three seconds it looks like. So I'm going to remove my, or just toggle the, um, the output here from this and see what this looks like. All right, okay, that looks okay. Um, now again, it moves a little slow. So if you if you wanted to have yours be say, you know, every second frame, uh, I had mine every third frame clearly. Um, but uh, let's see what happens when I apply the shape uh, keyframes here. So let's go back to the beginning of our little keyframes, and we're at our our uh, scale height, scale width. We're operating with those. So right now I've got them both set to eighty six and eighty six point four for both. Um, but um, so that's that's what I've put mine to, to to scale that to fit what I have here. But it could be 100% for both. That's fine. <clears throat> but what we'll do now, let me just bring this back up, and I'm I'm just going to be advancing through, and I'm going to find the the keyframes where it's it comes out of out of round, 
Um, so the first one is about the third keyframe here. So one, two, three, oops, four, all right? So this is a point where I need to sort of squish it a little bit. And um, if I were to uh, just take my, I like to keep my motion here. If I were just to sort of squish it like this, it wouldn't quite fit. So I need to rotate it as well as as uh, as squish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to rotate it to where I can kind of affect that same shape as it's sort of looking down like that, right? So it's sort of pitching downwards, uh, and then I'll um, uh, probably move to the. Oops, let me just undo that real quick. Um, I'm going to actually do this number here. I'm going to go back to the previous keyframe. right here, I'm gonna put a keyframe for both the scale height and the scale width. Um, because if I don't do that, then it's going to sort of tween those two from here. It's, it's gonna slowly get out of round before it before it comes over. And um, I'm going to just go to the next one here, and then we'll do what we just did. We'll rotate it out and see if we can't shrink it down some. All right, good. Um, and I'll just, I'll make sure my scale height is also applied as well. Uh, I want to say that's about right. And then for the next one, what we'll do is we'll sort of extend this outwards on its scale height. I think I need to rotate it downwards slightly. Just rotate it more towards pointing more downwards. And I'll see if I can just pull, oops. Okay, that's good. All right, let me save this real quick. Make sure you're saving your progress periodically here. And I'll do the same thing with the scale width. I'll put a keyframe for the scale width. And then we'll go to the next keyframe. And this is where we'll rotate it to where it's back to where it was. So in this case, my rotation should be zero. And then what we'll do is we'll widen it out. Oh, hello. We'll widen it out. And then we'll squash it down to where it looks as if it's sort of uh, impacting the floor and squashing it on the floor. Um, all right. And so what we'll do now is we'll go to the next keyframe. And the next keyframe, I'm going to uh, rotate this towards this direction here. And then I'll pull it in to elongate it. And I'll drag it up to make it look like it's pointing upwards. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to where we had it before for the next couple keyframes. So for this one, I need to go back and uh, figure out what my previous keyframe was. So let's go back here to say this one. So 86.4 was the keyframe I used before, was the values for scale. So I'll just change both of these back to 86.4. Now do the same thing to this one, 86.4. And we'll just uh, kind of move along the keyframes here to see how that shapes up. It looks about right. And then right here is where we need to affect the, key, the, affect the rotation again. Now, um, notice I didn't put another rotation um, keyframe here, but I, I am going to put another, I'm, I'll, I'll put another keyframe of the frame previous, the, the next keyframe previous here. So I'll just have this um, scale height, scale width, and then rotation. I'll put one for those as well. And then over here, I'll rotate it back like so and elongate it slightly. Oops, slightly. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the next keyframe here. And we'll apply the shape to the next one as well. And again, you can kind of move forward here. I'll, I'll make this zero and I'll put this down to where it fits in with how squished it is. You know, it's not quite as squished as it was before because the impact is a little bit less because it's falling on with less force from a, from a, a shorter distance. And um, I'll just keep doing this, and once again, I'll sp I'll speed through this as as you go through. See if you can't um, just extend extend it to the next uh, next step here. We'll just...
All right, so let's see what this looks like here. And you notice that even though we didn't tell it to curve, it automatically curved for us. And that's just a, that's part of the tweening process that they do in Premiere. See, that's a lot of fun. I think that looks really fun when you do it like that. Now, obviously, if you did it, if you made them a little bit faster, if you made all the keyframes close together, then it would, it would go a little faster. Um, we could always, um, always interpret things a bit differently um, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll just sort of have it move off screen so what I'll do is I'll just have it uh, um, I'll have it pause here for just a moment maybe a couple frames I'll just go one two three and then I'll put another keyframe for position and then I'll go maybe like a second out and I'll just uh, and I'll just uh, have it move off screen here oops wrong All right, and so that's essentially how you make a bouncing ball. And uh, maybe I don't need this last keyframe here. I can just get rid of that. Okay, so essentially um, what you want to do is um, just um, put your name on it somewhere. So I'm going to get my I'm going to get my text tool, and I'm just going to put my name uh, somewhere up here. Yeah, change the font from something other than what it is. Just give give it a different font. Make it you know make it your own. Find something that you like. I'm gonna choose uh, my go-to lemon milk, which I love, and um, I can put it up there in the corner. It'll be across the entire time. Maybe uh, maybe put it someplace where it's not gonna interfere with the ball. And uh, right, so what we'll do is we'll just um, export this as an MP4 and uh, submit it to D2L. All right, cannot wait to see you guys produce.